eating breakfast in Abingdon, I've got to say, the view's not bad at all, is it? In this episode, we cruise the busy waters between Abingdon and Oxford. We see sunken boats aplenty, encounter rowers, paddleboarders, punters and party boats, and take refuge at Black Jack's Hole. And also, we answer a burning question many of you have been dying to know. The town of Abingdon is surprisingly pleasant and claims to be Britain's oldest town. There is some interesting architecture, such as the County Hall Museum and the Old Jail. It's well worth a visit. Water points are few and far between on the Thames and they're always around the lock landings. But be warned, not all of them take hose pipes. On some of them, it's container only fill. Always a shame to see a sunken boat. It was probably someone's pride and joy. Looks as though there's been like an explosion through the roof or something, doesn't it? There's certainly been a fire on board anyway. I hope everyone was okay. And on the other side, another sunken boat. Last night we moored in Abingdon. Um, it's quite unusual for us mooring in a in a town rather than uh, in a rural location. Um, it was nice, yeah, yeah. Even the geese were quite quiet, weren't they? Um, there was a crappy band on in the pub, though. <laughs> they were quite crap, weren't they? You could have played much better, to be honest. Anyway, but apart from that, yeah, it was it was fine. It was nice mornings. Um, and I just wanted to say something about the mornings. That uh, the one last night was actually free, which is quite good. Uh, some of them aren't, though. Uh, we stopped for lunch in. Morning fence, didn't we? Uh, we did. I mean, stopping for lunch was was fine, but if you moor overnight and you're a craft longer than five meters, it's like twelve quid a night. So um, yeah, if you're on a tight budget or you're just tight like us, then uh, don't moor overnight in places where you have to pay. I think we should just say hello to Alistair and thank him for coming to meet us in Wallingford. That, that's a very good point, yes. Um, yeah, so, hi Alistair, and thanks for the croissants. Great stuff. There just appear to be a lot of sunken boats around here. The River Cherwell enters the Thames just before the boathouses. Ah, that's better. It really is very busy around here with all manner of craft. Concentration is essential. Folly Bridge is dead ahead. Actually, you can navigate either side of the island, but best to take it slow. We chose to go to the right, past the very busy Head of River pub. Having gone through Osney Lock, there are some nice moorings alongside East Street. Off to the 
right underneath the footbridge is the entrance to the Oxford Canal. Pretty busy around here. We've also been warned there's a wedding party going on at the Perch pub and that there are three or four party boats down there so quite a Saturday afternoon and it's sunny. What can you expect? Entering Port Meadow now. 3,000 year old burial sites have been discovered on Port Meadow and the land was used by Iron Age people for grazing their livestock in the summer. Today though it's a haven for aquatic bird life, walkers and dogs. These guys were completely unaware of our presence and kept moving in front of the path of the boat. Can you move across please? Move to the side. It can be shallow on both sides of the river, especially during drought conditions like we've been experiencing at the moment. I was intrigued by the peculiar trees. No idea what species they are. Anyone know? If so, leave a comment. We took refuge from the searing 30 degree temperatures by mooring in Black Jack's hole. Now Black Jack was an evil goblin who would leap on swimming children and imprison them in his underwater cave. I decided to test the water. Maybe I was a little too old for Black Jack. We were though treated to squadrons of geese flying into roost every evening at 20 past nine. Now a few people have approached us and, um, and asked how we met. So uh, to answer this question, I think <laughs> I'm gonna hand over to Val to be honest. Um, how did we meet? <laughs> um, well, we both had Instagram accounts and um, I think I appeared on Andrew's feed thanks to Instagram. Um, and he started following me uh, and I checked my follower, uh, my new follower, and thought his account was interesting. So um, we just started chatting through uh, adding comments to each other's uh, posts. Um, after a few weeks, we'd got a little bit more prolific in our uh, messaging. And then Andrew approached me to um, write the lyrics to a song for uh, to a yeah to, to a song for a video that he had created, um, and I think really from there that's when it all started to blossom, wasn't it? Because we were working together, yeah, and uh, so we were in contact more, um, and and that was it really. But I was living at the time in the northwest of England. Um, my I've got two grown up children, and they were um, both living in Cardiff. So I moved down there to be near my family, which also put me just an hour away from Andrew because he was in Bath at the time. Um, so we were actually able to meet then. Uh, prior to that, we'd done a little bit of um, uh, sort of virtual music dates, hadn't we? But oh, we yes. hadn't actually yeah. met. We um, created it, our own playlists. Yes, and, and, um, and listened to music uh, in our individual rooms, um, but at the same time. Um, and we chatted a few times on the phone, hadn't we? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so, and then once we met, that was it. Really? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
um, what was it I said on your Instagram and you thought oh I like that fellow it was I, I, living I, close I, to nature I, oh I, I yeah. value living close to nature and oh, I can't remember what else it yeah, was but that anyway was a, an exact line that I use so um, so yeah yeah um, so there, you, there you have it folks that's how we met so thank you Instagram yeah thank you Instagram um, I mean it's fair to say that both of us had tried like online dating mm -hmm. sites before which yeah. um which you know I think both of us found didn't really work yeah. at all so um yeah that worked out brilliantly <laughs> for us both didn't it so cool beans <laughs> one last thing as well uh, so for any old codgers out there rather like myself just don't give up hope there's always someone there <laughs> that's all there is to it <laughs> but if you find someone that doesn't try to change you and if you find someone that doesn't have to blame you and if you find someone you don't need to explain to You found the one you love We're all searching That's all I know for someone to keep us warm when the rain soaks through our clothes